Okay, this topic, chemical change, carries on um, with reactions in aqueous solution. So chemical change, we've already been through quite a bit of chemical change in looking at what's a reaction, what are temperature changes in a reaction and things like that. And now we look at reactions in aqueous solution. So when we talk about solutions, there's a lot of um, definitions here that we're going to work through as we work through the slides, but you need to write down these definitions. And obviously with all definitions, you need to learn all of the definitions. So why are we so interested in ions in aqueous solution or chemical reactions in aqueous solution? It's because nearly all reactions that we have occur in aqueous solution because you know they'll say to you humans are 70% water so obviously the 70% water is full of dissolved substances that are carrying out chemical reactions and in fact the reason why you have a body temperature is because of the chemical reactions that are taking place in aqueous solution in your cells so in the cell here you'll have learned remember learning about this cell all of this cytoplasm is basically a chemical reaction factory and it's basically in a watery solution so whenever we talk about solutions and we're in aqueous solution the water is the solvent and everything else that you dissolve in the water is the solute and if you put a solute in a solvent and it dissolves you end up with a solution okay so why is water such a good solvent water is such a good solvent because it's polar Okay, so we've discussed this before. Here is an image of uh, water, H, H, O, H, 2, O. Okay, and you, we know that water forms covalent bonds. So we've talked about the nature of covalent bonds where um, electrons are shared. But in this case, the oxygen is a bit of a pig and it sucks the electrons closer towards it and away from the hydrogen, leaving the hydrogen slightly positively charged and the oxygen slightly negatively charged. So we can work out if something's got a polar bond, if we look in the periodic table, we look at the electronegativity on the periodic table, and the electronegativity in hydrogen and oxygen, the difference, remember delta En, delta means change or difference, the difference in the electronegativity is 1.4. So this oxygen here, grabs all the electrons and leaves the hydrogens positive. So these little arrows show you where are the positive and negative charges. And as a result of this, anything that is ionic can be dissolved in water because water has a polar covalent bond. Okay. So what is the definition of a polar molecule? A polar molecule is a molecule that has two oppositely charged poles and is also known as a dipole. Okay, di meaning two, so two poles. So any solution in which the solvent is water is called an aqueous solution. So salt and water gives you a salt solution. It is an aqueous solution. So how do aqueous solutions actually form? The first way is through what we call dissociation. So here I've got a large sodium chloride crystal and all of the little polar water molecules are coming up to the salt crystal, say at the bottom of my glass of water, and they are arranging themselves so that their positive end is towards the negative chlorine ions and their negative end is towards the positive sodium ions. And so these polar water molecules take the crystal lattice structure apart because of the forces of attraction. Remember, um, like charges repel, opposite charges attract. So they actually split up the salt crystal. And we can show this in a reaction. We can say sodium chloride solid, so this is a salt crystal, goes to Na plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. So this aqueous is showing me that it has been dissolved in water like this, that the little crystals have been pulled apart and they're running around as cations and anions in the solution and this makes it much easier for them to react with something else the moment they dissolved in a solution. So this is dissociation. You have something that is already ionic and the water comes, a, uh, comes along and splits it apart. The second part is called ionization. Now remember in term one we talked about ionization energies and ionization is when you become an ion, okay? 
So in a covalent compound, what happens, usually covalent compounds that are polar themselves will turn into ions in water. So you have one polar thing and another polar thing, and along comes the water, and the water goes to this bond here. Say, for instance, here, this is hydrogen chloride, okay, in the gaseous state. And the water comes along and it breaks this bond here. This is a hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom, and they're covalently bonded. Along comes this water with its polar nature, and it actually breaks this bond. And then it forms this thing here called a hydronium ion. This H3O plus aqueous is a hydronium ion. And then there's a chlorine ion. So you go from covalent to ionic. And that's why it's called ionization. So the main thing that does this is acids. And you'll know something is an acid because there is an H at the front of its chemical formula. So water can sometimes be considered an acid as well, but most acids have an H at the front of their chemical formula. So this is ionization as opposed to dissociation. So these are the two processes where you can form an aqueous solution, dissociation or ionization. So ionization is the formation of ions from a covalent compound. And all of this, both the dissociation and the ionization can only occur because water itself is polar. So there are a couple of other things that also ionize. So most acids, remember I said anything that starts with an H is an acid. And the other one is ammonia. Now ammonia is actually a base, but it can also ionize. So if you have ammonia and water, it turns into this ammonium ion and a hydroxide ion. It splits the water here from being H2O, and then this one hydrogen goes onto the NH3 to form NH4+, and then you're left with OH-. This is actually a reversible reaction. It's not a very um, strong reaction. So we would say that the ionization of ammonia is not a strong reaction. And it goes backwards. Some of the ammonium ions in solution will go straight back to plain ammonia. You'll learn more about that in later grades, but for now you must know ammonia is covalent and it can dissolve in water to form the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. So the ammonium ion is NH4+. Plus. It is a cation. It is one of the few cations that are not metallic. So then there's one other word that we must learn to do with this. And this is dissolution, okay? So if you look at the little image here, the little image is showing you dissolution. For instance, here is a grain of sugar and they're surrounded by water. And then the solid is moving into the solvent. So this can happen by dissociation, which we talked about, or ionization, which we also talked about. But sometimes there's just covalent compounds that will dissolve in water but they don't actually form ions. They just get separated out by the water molecules, but they're not actually turned into ions. So sugar di um, dissolves, but it doesn't dissociate or ionize. It is a dissolution reaction, if you want to call it a reaction. So hydration is this process where you remember the ions in the crystal lattice are split up. It's called hydration. It's the process where ions are surrounded by water molecules in an aqueous solution. And this happens because water is polar and can separate the charged particles. And if you want to show these things, dissolution, here's dissociation, dissolution, sodium chloride, which we know is ionic. It goes from the solid to sodium ions and chlorine ions. Copper sulfate, copper two sulfate is also ionic and it splits up from the copper sulfate solid into the Cu2 plus ion aqueous and the SO4 2 minus polyatomic ion aqueous. And this is a blue solution. Then potassium hydroxide, which is a base, splits up into the potassium ion and the hydroxide ion. And calcium nitrate splits up from calcium nitrate into the calcium 2 plus ion. And have a look, two nitrate ions. So this in the solid form is one complete molecule and in the solution it's then got one, two, three ions in the solution. So it splits up into three things. Same with ionization, usually with the acids, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid. 
These two are gas. This is a concentrated liquid acid at room temperature. And they split up into the ions in aqueous solution, both the proton and the chlorine ion. The one thing you must know with the sulfuric acid, when they put the liquid like this, it means it's concentrated, but they also sometimes write H2SO4 aqueous, and then you know it's a dilute acid. We also get this problem with acids in the atmosphere. You know, in the atmosphere, there's always water in the atmosphere and there are clouds. So if you put certain gases into the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nit nitrogen dioxide, all three of these gases, dissolve in the atmosphere see when there's water in the atmosphere in the clouds and they form carbonic acid sulfuric acid and nitrous acid as well as nitric acid and all of these contribute to acid rain which is extremely bad for the environment so it's a danger these um, uh, covalent compounds ionizing with water to form acid rain and then the last one that you can talk about is the dissolution of a molecule like sugar. This is not polar and it's covalent, but it just dissolves. It doesn't go turn into an iron or separate out or anything like that. And this is the formula for sugar and then water. And you can see nothing has happened to the formula for sugar. So this sugar solution can't conduct electricity. The other two solutions can conduct electricity because they contain ions. Anything that contains ions can conduct electricity in aqueous solution. So this is also when we're talking about dissolving, you need to know about something called like dissolves like. Polar molecules dissolve polar molecules, but non-polar molecules will not dissolve other non-polar molecules. And this is why water and oil don't mix. So water is polar, oil is strongly non-polar, and so they will not dissolve because they are not alike. But if you mix oil and anything else that's um, not polar, like petrol or turps or something, those two will mix quite happily because they're both non-polar. So like dissolves like. And always remember that cations are positively charged.